Okay, נתחיל. הלו חיים. הלו. And thank you for taking the time to answer some questions about the roots and meaning of NVR. Um, my first question to you, which has always interested me, is how did NVR come about? Okay, it started with uh, the feeling that I had that uh, therapists, psychologists, don't know how to build a good alliance with parents. One of the reasons is that parents come to treatment, come for help with very pressing and acute questions. And we psychologists don't like acute situation, burning situations, extremely demanding situations. We tend to trust more into slowly developing processes. But then the parents who come with very pressing needs, like for instance, a child who beats his sister, who encloses himself, he shuts himself in the, in the toilet and voices all kinds of threats, or disappears in the evenings. These are, are, are get found by the police, drunk or uh, under drugs. Parents need an immediate answer. What do I do now? An immediate orientation. They have to do something. And actually they'll do something because not doing is also doing. So we needed to find some kind of direction, some kind of a north star that if the parents go in this direction they already feel that they they are they have some sense of orientation that they are not just drifting. A compass. A compass. Okay. And the idea, the basic idea that we uh, came with was the idea of parental presence. We define parental presence for parents intuitively. Okay, the child will experience, have a feeling of parental presence when the parents behave in ways that convey the message, I am your parent and I remain your parent. I am here and I stay here. You can divorce me, you can fire me, I am here and I stay here. So we started to develop this idea. How can par- We saw that parents react very well to this idea and we developed a series of, let us say, practical steps how to manifest parental presence. But then we saw that sometimes these very decisive parental stance led to escalation. Children reacted okay, very sharply and the parents reacted to the reaction and the end the parents were scared. They were scared of the child's reactions and of their own reactions. So we had to find a way to stop this escalation, to help the parents increase the parents' presence, manifest presence, and resist the invitation to escalate, let us say so, not to escalate. That's where NVR came for, because what is nonviolent resistance? Nonviolent resistance is the only kind of social fight, the only one, that is carried out by presence, the decisive presence of the militants, not by throwing things or attacking, but by being there, by being in the place, by not budging. And then nonviolent resistance is also the only kind of social fight that prevents escalation. Struggle. Mm-hmm. Struggle, struggle. Struggle. That prevents escalation. Okay? It is not only that it is nonviolent, it is also non-escalating. It avoids provocations. It, ab- it, ab- it avoids offensive things because if you offend, you will provoke, you bring the other party, the adversary, to stick together against you. But if you don't offend and if you don't provoke, there will be more and more voices on the other side that say, these guys are right, we are the wrong ones. Okay? So, so nonviolent resistance is a doctrine that combines decisive presence with the prevention of escalation. So when we found that there is a doctrine, there is a systematic a body of, of knowledge, of know-how on how to do this, we started translating okay, the know-how, the doctrine, the tactics of nonviolent resistance from the social field 
into the family field. We did a systematic work of translation. That was the beginning of NVR. That's a, that's a very uh, interesting and concise way to put it. What could you also tell us about the historical circumstances or the historical development of NVR? Where did you start? Doing what? Under, under what circumstances? With what people? At what time? Historically, how did it happen? Well, I, I, I teach psychotherapy. I teach work with parents that I did already before. So I developed those ideas because I saw where we were ineffective, where we as a profession didn't have an answer. And also historically, I would say that historically the big problem of parents today in our society is that they have lost their anchor. They are drifting. They have lost their sense of direction. They are drifting because they have no clear base for their authority because they are mixed up and also because in modern society children are bombarded bombarded with with uh, all kinds of stimuli all kinds of uh, uh, temptations even okay and also children in modern society have a much bigger possibility of vanishing of disappearing from from view so that parents lose their place they become like leaves like dry leaves so they drift actually nvr is an answer to the problem of parental drift they drift because they don't know how to react burnout they are they really lose their own weight okay it's not that they lose they, they, they don't have weight anymore it's a, it's they a, don't a, have a place they it's don't a have form a position of, it's a form of erasure yeah, so erosion, 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 erosion. erosion. Okay. yeah, the, the, the position got eroded mm -hmm. by cultural developments, by mm -hmm. social developments. Mm -hmm. So what we did with NVR was actually countering the strand of parental drift, of erosion. We give them a place, we give them a position, we give them a voice, we give them a wave, we bring them back to a position in which they can anchor themselves and thereby offer an anchor to their children to stabilize. Thank you. Um, we can uh, move on to the next question now. Um, what do you think NVR introduced to the field of psychological work with families? I think it introduced the possibility of resisting. Okay, The whole field of psychological work with parents uh, was, let's say, it fell into one of two poles, both of them problematic. One of them is transforming the parents into kind of good therapists to their children, okay, understanding, empathic, okay, this is very good, okay, but it is not enough. What happens when the child is in problematic developmental course and it is not responsive to this kind of, of positive, empathetic, loving voice. So we added, how can you love and resist at the same time? Now the other pole, which was always very problematic also, is the attempt to control the child. Okay, That's the attempt to control behavior therapies like that. You reinforce negatively, positively. And then you try to... The problem is that attempts at control miscarry, and they miscarry because they create escalation. What happens when a punishment is not effective? You have to strengthen the, pop, the, the punishment, but then you get more resistance, okay? That the idea of, of, uh, uh, of punishments and also of prizes is in the end self-defeating, okay? Parents have to take a stance and stay there without bribing the child or punishing the child all the time. Okay, this great. So that's we, I think, and VR gave a possibility of being present, of resisting, of being close to the child, of being there, which gives the parents weight, weight and influence without falling in the traps. Okay, let's be the child's therapist on the one side, 
or on the other side, okay, we have to punish them. Those are the Silas, Silas and Charybdis of modern parenting, which fail to give a good answer to the challenges. So NVR recognizes the need to sometimes resist, and at the same time provides a venue for resisting in a way which does not hurt the child or the relationship, but rather acts to mend it. You know, NVR is non-violent resistance. Sometimes people are, are tempted to stress only the non-violent, and then you have a kind of soft NVR. That's highly problematic, okay? So we say you have to stress both sides, the non-violent, which is also the non-escalating, the positive side, I am with you and not against you, and resistance, but those things are standard. So you have to stress both of them together, okay? So that's what it is, non-violent resistance. You have both elements. The non-violent is the positive side, the non-provocative side, the supportive side, and the resistance is the, the side side, the determined side. Okay, I can't okay, allow this to happen if I am your parent. I can't give up on you, and I can give you up. Okay, that, that's. Do, do you think there is anything therapeutical in the long term in NVR? Yeah, sure. I think it is a therapy. NVR is a form. In what of therapy. sense? In what way? It changes the parents, and by changing the parents, it changes the child. We have shown. Okay, our studies have, have shown that parents become less impulsive, less overreactive, less helpless, less hopeless more in contact, and we have also shown that interaction between parents and child is, falls less into patterns of escalation, less into, par into power struggles, and there is also more and more positive actions and initiatives from the parents uh, regarding the child. And this changes not only the family atmosphere, but also the child's behavior. We have shown that NVR has a positive impact on a series of negative child patterns of child behavior. Right. And NVR has uh, NVR was initially developed during the mid nineties, right? Yeah. Uh, by late nineties. Yeah. Late nineties by yourself yeah. and a group of your students yeah. at the Tel Aviv University. Yeah, yeah. And initially, it started as as an approach for parents of children with disruptive behaviors. That's right. Violent, disruptive, conduct disorders, ADHD with other complications. But, okay. but ever, since, ever since you and we discovered that the same principle of resisting in a non-violent way are applicable and can be very productive in a very wide spectrum of situations, conditions, behaviors that's right. and context. That's right. The first step in widening our scope was when we found that, that there is a variant of NVR which is very, very helpful for dealing with anxious children, children who have. Because what happens is that a child with a, a, an anxiety disorder, his condition becomes worse when the parents accommodate to him. What does accommodate? That means when they organize their behavior and the environment in such ways that the child does not experience anxiety. Parental accommodation deepens anxiety disorders. So a certain variant of NVR, okay, we published a, a book about children's fears, helping parents of anxious children and other caretakers also, we help the parents, NVR is a good way of helping the parents not to accommodate, but to support. Support without accommodating. Support without overprotecting. What is the difference? Support is I am at your side, but you okay, have to function. You have, I help you, but you have to face okay, the frightening situation. And when parents utilize this variant of NVR and stop accommodating, okay, anxious children are better able to function, become less anxious. Actually, research shows that the gains of parent training with NVR, even with children, anxious children, 
who refuse any, to receive any kind of therapy is as effective as behavior, because cognitive behavior therapy for children who accept a therapy. What you are suggesting now is actually what I understand you to be saying is something that goes beyond resistance. You talk about NVR as resistance in non as resistance without escalation and support without accommodation. That's right. So these, these, these you kind of present two equivalent, yeah, um, the, uh, mutually uh, the different uh, facets. The different yeah. facets came to the fore as we started dealing with different populations. Okay, there is a whole uh, or a. Uh, method of NVR in schools. Okay? How can teachers okay, develop their authority in acceptable and legitimate ways? They use the principles of NVR which we have adapted to the conditions of the school. Then okay, similar okay, uh, the processes or the steps like the ones in NVR are very helpful also for normal parents, parents who, whose children do not have extreme behaviors, they help the parents overcome this drift. Okay, the drift that is a problem for every parent. Okay, how can parents deal with children becoming more and more drawn to the cell phone or to the computer? Parents drift, they don't know how to do it. It's something that came, it's a big wave, this computer wave, internet wave, and they feel completely helpless. How can parents take a stance? And we have a whole branch of NVAR that deals with uh, misuse, abuse of computer and the cell phone. Okay, we instruct parents, we give course on parents uh, whose children have no uh, psychiatric or psychological diagnosis. They're simply being tempted and are abusing the cell phone because it is there. It's a new kind of danger, a new kind of temptation. It's also a new aid, but it's also a new kind of danger. Then we help parents deal with such challenges as negative influence, bad influence in school. Okay, normal children, every child can be subject to negative influences okay, by other kids, by bad persons, every, or simply by people who want to sell them all kinds of things, including drugs. How can parents counter, okay, get a standing, get a footing against these negative influences? And there we developed a, a special version of parental presence which we call vigilant care. Vigilant care is actually the parental attitude that deals with child risk of all kinds, okay, the risk of our children, okay, risks of uh, computer, risks of, risks of pornography, risks of drugs, risks of uh, cell phones, okay, how can I deal with that, or bad company, and so forth. How can I keep a finger on the pulse and know and be no more what is happening without being invasive, about being there, giving the child a feeling of accompaniment. All of these are developments of the basic idea of NVR. You know, Chaim, I once counted the, the various uh, different applications and protocols of NVR, and I, I, I think I, at the time I came to about 15. Yeah. Um, looking forward to the future, yeah. where do you see NVR going? Where do you see it developing further? Okay, my, I have a very strong uh, center of interest now in the school system. I think the school system, I think we have very good answers to the enormous challenges Crisis even. of the school system of teachers. Okay, the weakening of teachers okay, is tremendous. And I think we have very good answers for that and the responses that we get from teachers and from school directors is very important. So I see this as a major social challenge. Another highly important social challenge is the development of NVR with the parents of grown-up children, okay, of adult children. Okay? We are writing now a book together with Dan Dolberger on the subject. We have a lot of, a lot of experience. We have published okay, two articles on the subject of that. Now we're writing a book on how to help because Parents don't stop being parents when the child reaches adulthood, okay? Particularly in cases where the child doesn't study, the adult child 
doesn't study, doesn't work, does all kinds of bad things, or simply stay at home doing nothing. Okay, what can parent? That's a, that's a problem that's becoming more and more common in all modern societies. So we developed a methodology, an NVR methodology for dealing that. I think this is a point where we have an answer for a highly pertinent social problem, for one of the social problems that's really plaguing and a grown us, one as well. our society. And the fact that we have expanded our methodologies to deal with anxious disturbances Okay, increases our scope tremendously. Actually, why do we help with anxious disturbances? Because also the problem with anxiety is parental drift. Okay, the child gets anxious and the parents must okay, do something to rescue the child. The parents are lose their footing because of the child's anxiety and thereby deepen the child's inside. So in all those situations what we are doing is helping the parents to anchor themselves. Okay, to say here we are and here we stay and in this way we can stop drifting. We can, as we anchor, it's like an anchor of a ship. Okay, the anchor of a ship can only anchor the ship when it anchors itself on the ground. Okay, so the parents, they can only anchor the child, stabilize the child when they anchor themselves in their parental ground. Thank you so much. Welcome. So, no, Kamas Manzaya, Srim Dakar. Eh, Ganu le.